How can old fence lines mark the boundary between two totally different forests? On one side of this fence, we have this young hardwood forest. And on the other side of this fence, we have a hemlock forest. They're on the same site with the same soils. Everything is the same. But the forests on either side of this barbed wire fence are home to different species of trees and plants and animals. They're providing different ecological benefits. They're totally different places. I see this again and again and again. At least here in the Eastern United States, many of the forests that we have today are as defined by their history of land use as they are by their ecology. When we cross a barbed wire fence or a stone fence, the forest completely changes. While that fence line may be meaningless in an ecological sense, it is meaningful in a human sense. For hundreds of years, this fence line may have marked the boundary between two landowners that manage their land in completely different ways. Or at some point, a farmer said, you know what, we're just gonna let that far pasture go. 20 years later, they walked up to the next stone fence and said, you know what? We'll let that far pasture go. The age of a forest, the number of years since it's been a pasture, as most of the forests in the Northeast have been, and the way that it's been managed since determines the species of trees that are there. It can determine the structure, different generations of trees, things like big old trees and dead wood on the ground. And so now, even if it shouldn't be different, these fence lines through the woods can mark a significant ecological change. And it's just because of that history of land use.